Good afternoon, children, uh, second graders at the Shades Cahaba Elementary School in Homewood in Alabama, and children at the Benny School in Michigan, and children everywhere, especially second graders. The Mysterious Giant of Barletta. Now, before we get started, I have to show you some pictures. Now, this is a an old folk tale retold by the author and illustrator Tommy De Paola. He is Italian and this is a tale from his country of Italy. Now here is a map of Italy and it looks like a big boot. It looks like it's kicking that island at the bottom and <clears throat> it is uh, in the, the uh, continent of Europe. But let me show you the next picture. That's Italy, the big boot. Now here it is, divided into states, provinces are there, but states, and there it is, and it's in water. It, well, it's land, land mass, mountains and hills in water all around except up in the north where the mountains are. And Mr. Lou, where is your family from? Can you point that out, Abruzzo right there? My family, my mother came from an, an, a town, Foggi, near, near Barletta, not too close. And my father was somewhere, his family was somewhere right there. up here. And there's the city of Barletta. Now there, the Mediterranean Sea is a big sea and the Atlantic Ocean is over there. The Pacific Ocean is way, way off. And in the Mediterranean, there are two smaller seas. That, mm -hmm. This is the Tyrrhenian Sea. This portion is called the Tyrrhenian Sea. This portion of water is called the Adriatic Sea. And you'll hear Adriatic because this army that's coming down the coast of the Adriatic Sea to Barletta is burning up and winning, fighting and taking all the towns and they're coming to Barletta. And last, here is the giant of Barletta. There he is in front of the church in Barletta. And uh, he's been there for at least 800 years. And he's older than that because he's not always been there. He is known to be at least a thousand, six or seven hundred years old. No one knows how he got here. So there's your geography lesson. And now the story. The Mysterious Giant of Barletta, an Italian folk tale retold and illustrated by Tommy De Paolo. In the town of Barletta, in front of the church of San Sepolcro, stood a huge statue. No one knew where he had come from or when. The mysterious giant, for that is what the people called the statue, had always been there, as long as anyone could remember. Even Zia Concetta. Zia in Italian means aunt, like aunt and uncle. Zia Concetta was the oldest one in all of Barletta. She lived right across the square from the giant statue. Every day, every night, for my whole lifetime, I've looked out the window and there he is, she would say. There 
like six pictures map, so go to each one as I read. Good weather and bad, the mysterious giant stood there. The people of Barletta loved having the statue in their town. In the early morning, right before the sun came up, the sisters from the convent and other townspeople came to church for holy mass. They always greeted the giant with a nod or a smile. The people on the way to the market always hailed the giant and asked that he give them good luck to sell all their goods or to get a good bargain. All day long, the children played around his legs, and the doves flew around his head. The young boys would sit on his big feet and tell jokes. A little later, the older boys would sit on the giant's feet to watch the older girls go by. And at night, lovers would steal kisses in the giant's shadow. Then the streets would be empty. Doves would settle on the giant's head and shoulders and arms and coo themselves to sleep. And Zia Concetta would open her window and call, Buona notte, Colosso. Good night, big one. This was the time the giant loved best. All was calm and all was still. Ah, oh, what, a, what a peaceful life, the mysterious giant thought. But then, that day, this peaceful life was over. Word had reached the town that an army of a thousand men was destroying all the towns and cities along the lower Adriatic sea coast. And this army was heading straight for Barletta. The townspeople ran through the streets in panic. No one in Barletta was ready for an army coming to destroy them. They had no generals, no captains. Why? they didn't even have an army of soldiers. Shouts and screams echoed off the buildings. The night lit, was lit with torches. All the peace and quiet was gone. No doves came to settle on the mysterious giant's shoulders, and Zia Concetta didn't call. Buona notte from her window. The mysterious giant didn't like this at all. The next morning was no better. It seemed as though everyone was at the church for Holy Mass, but there was no market. Not, no one even smiled, let alone waved at the mysterious giant. No children played. Everyone rushed around, piling their belongings in carts and wagons. Everyone was getting ready to run from Barletta. Everyone except Zia Concetta and the mysterious giant. Colosso, she said to the huge statue. 
as long as I can have remembered. You have stood here looking over this town and its people. Barletta loves you, and I know you love Barletta. I wish you could do something to save us from this army. With your size, I'm sure you could frighten them away. Why don't you hop down from your pedestal? And that's just what the mysterious giant did. Now, said Sia Conchata, they put their heads together and came up with an idea. And a pretty good one, too, said Sia Conchata. Mysterious giant, giant climbed back and stood still. People of Barletta, people of Barletta, the Conchetta called, come quickly, come quickly, good news, un miracolo, a miracle. Our giant is going to save us. Come, come. The people of Barletta gathered around. Friends, Zia Conchetta said, our giant will go to meet this army himself. All you have to do is three things. First, bring me the biggest onion you can find. Second, stay completely out of sight. Hide under the bed, hide in the closet, hide in the cellar, in the attic, but stay out of sight. And third, don't ask any questions. Have faith in our mysterious giant. Someone quickly brought an onion. Now hide, hide, shouted Zia Conchetta, and everyone scurried off. Well, Colosso, said Zia Conchetta, as she sliced the onion in half. Buona fortuna, good luck. The mysterious giant took an onion half in each hand, once more stepped off the pedestal, and strode off to meet the army. <clears throat> Three miles outside the city, the mysterious giant sat down by the side of the road and held the onion pieces close to his eyes. Big tears began to run down his cheeks. The giant made loud sobbing noises. What a sight the army saw as it came over the hill. Halt! shouted the captain. The army halted. What is that? The captain whispered to one of his lieutenants. It looks like a giant boy crying, answered the lieutenant. Well, we'll see about this, said the captain, marching off to where the mysterious giant sat. I am Captain Minchen, the captain declared. We have come to destroy your town. Who are you, and what are you doing here crying? No tricks now. Answer me. Oh, sir, said the giant, sobbing. I'm, 
I'm sitting out here away from the town because the other boys in school won't let me play with them. They say I'm too small. They pick on me all the time. They call me names like minuscolo and deblo, tiny and weakling. I'm always the last one chosen for games. Today, today they told me that if I tried to go to school, they would come and beat me up. I hate being small. giant sniffled loudly and blew the hats off the soldiers standing in front. The captain and the army stood dumbstruck. If this giant was a small boy that the others teased, then imagine what the rest of the people of this town were like. But some day, sir, the giant bellowed, some day I'll show them I'm going to eat up all of my pasta and I'll grow big and strong, and then I'll be able to fight back. The soldiers began to back away, trembling. The lieutenants gathered around the captain, who had backed away from the giant too, there was only one thing to do. Captain Minkin and his lieutenants drew their swords. They held them in the air and shouted. About face, double time, march. The army turned and fairly ran in the opposite direction of Barletta. The mysterious giant threw away the onion halves, dried his tears, and went back to the church of San Sepulcro. They're gone, they're gone, shouted Zia Concetta to the townspeople as the giant climbed back on his pedestal once more. The army is gone, you can come out now. The town has been saved, our giant did it. Che bella festa, what a festival, what a celebration was held that night. <clears throat> but when it was over and the moon was high in the sky, the mysterious giant looked out over the sleeping town. Doves cooed themselves to sleep on his head and shoulders. Everything was calm. Everything was still. Zia Concetta opened her window. Buona notte, Colosso. Good night and grazie. Thank you. There you have it. One of my favorites. Uh, Tommy De Paola is very famous. He has many, many books, and you might know a couple of them. Uh, there are the Streganona stories about Big Anthony, and there's uh, the Indian, Indian paintbrush, 
there's the, the uh, legend, legend of the blue bonnet. I will read to fourth graders. And uh, there's uh, another great fun uh, Irish folk tale called, um, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, I'll, it'll come to me. Next time. His wife is dead. Dead. Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> Bye, students. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. I'll, I'll see you later in the month.